Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, so let's make a start on adding those UDIM coordinates. So I've got my height field here in this geometry object. I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave all my height field stuff together in one geometry object to keep myself organized. So I'm going to press U to jump up to object level. I've already got one that I've been working on here, but we'll just put that to one side. In fact, no, we'll go in here and we'll delete all this and start again. Okay, so what I've done is I've just created an empty geometry object to contain my uh, my polygonal approximation of my terrain. Okay, um, you can render, you know, there's nothing to stop you rendering out your height fields as volumes, personal preference, you know, depending on the needs of your project, absolutely fine. But in this case, we want to use polygons because we're using Substance Painter and polygons are what Substance Painter understands. Okay, so let's jump inside our terrain low object and then using an object merge, we can bring in our output from our height field. And there you can see we called it HF out. Okay, so we've brought in our height field now for processing. Okay, and the first thing we want to do is we want to convert this into polygons. Okay, and the node that can do that for us is called Terrain. And it's one of the labs tools that was uh, added, which is super useful. It's called Labs Terrain Mesh Output. A bit of a mouthful, but there you go. And we're going to plug that in and let it do its thing. And what it's going to do, it's going to look at the mesh and it's going to convert it into polygons. Once it's done its thing, Obviously, this is this is not the, not a hugely dense um, not a hugely dense volume. It's four million voxels, which is not particularly um, processor intensive. Again, if you're wanting to squeeze more detail out of your height field, you might want to resample that to get more voxels, which in turn will evaluate to to more polygons. All right. So let's take a look at what this terrain mesh output is doing for us okay and straight off the bat it's it's asking us how do we want to tile this um, so it's it's all it's sort of expecting you to think right okay I want to deal with this terrain in a chopped up fashion at the moment it's set to four by four um, and you know you might want to work with that so that will create 16 sets of texture maps uh, and don't forget, we're talking about sets of texture maps. So it'll be the diffuse, the roughness, the displacement, the um, normal map, and any other maps that you want to add into it. So you can very, very quickly, you know, generate an awful lot of files. So for for this, I'm going to drop it to two by two, just to keep things moving quickly, because everything is obviously going to be exponentially more processor intensive if we're creating lots of lots of maps and I can turn on the visualize and there you go you can see that it's done exactly what we, we looked at in that PowerPoint it's split our mesh into nice even chunks and if we press space 5 to go to our UV coordinate view you can see the green lines here indicating UV seams so we're almost there already um, all we need to do is, is take advantage of these additional UV cells here to spread out those, those cells. Okay, so space one to go back to my perspective. And for output, I'm going to ignore that for now because we're going to output it after a little bit more processing. But you could output the geometry. And remember, we're looking at geometry now. We're no longer looking at pixels. Um, you could output that directly from here, but we're going to process this a little bit more. Um, so if we bring up the information for this node now, you can see we're looking at 4 million polygons. Okay, so that's a bit heavy. That's kind of, um, for Substance Painter, you know, that would, you'd be struggling to work with that. So we want to bring that down substantially. Uh, and also in Substance Painter, we can take advantage of baking out normal maps and displacement that will bring back all that high frequency detail anyway. Uh, and I'll, I'll do a particularly um, 
I'll do a, a particularly high reduction in this case just so you can see how good the baking is between the high polygon and the low polygon objects. Um, so with that, in the meshing section of this, we can just drop the base density. At the moment, it's turning every voxel, essentially turning every voxel into a, into a polygon object. So we've got, here you can see, we've got four million voxels uh, or volume pixels, if you like. Um, and it's converting those directly into polygons. So we get a very, very dense mesh. And if I put the wireframe on, I mean, yeah, we've got tiny, tiny, tiny polygons. Um, all that information can be baked down into a normal map and a displacement map. So we can afford to be quite brutal with our, our density reduction here. And let's just go with, say, 0.2, I think I used in the last example. Uh, it'll, it'll recalculate that and it'll sort of give us a, a lower resolution. And yes, admittedly, we do lose a little bit of detail, but we can bring that back when we bake out our maps. So let's middle click on this again. And now we're down to 160,000 polygons, which is much more manageable in in, um, uh, in Substance Painter. And it also has the additional benefit of being ever so slightly quicker to render as well. So you, you're kind of optimizing as you go along. And in my head, this piece of terrain is like a mid-ground object. It's not, you know, you, you, you're never going to be seeing it from sort of this level. Um, so it's, it's sort of a, a mid to far ground uh, uh, distant object. So we can afford to lose a little bit of the high frequency from the actual geometry. But ultimately, if we take a look at them, so if I put the display flag back on the height field object merge, so we've got lots of nice high frequency detail there. And I'll turn off visualize. The the polygon reduction's actually done a good job of, of, of keeping though uh, the, the the detail and certainly the larger forms are all as we'd expect uh, and as we see when we move into substance painter um, all those high frequency details will be brought back in the in the normal map bakes okay so let's press on so i'm going to press space five to jump over to my UV coordinate view and here you can see everything all my UV coordinates are nicely packed in the 0 to 1 range you could you know take this and do a 4k texture map or an 8k texture map totally fine but for this example we want to make use of UDIMS so we're going to put down a UV layout node okay and just plug that in give it a second to think and what we want to do is in the targets options here. At the moment it's currently packing into rectangles. We want to set that over to UDIM tiles. All right. And what you'll find is nothing happens because Houdini is analyzing the UV coordinates and saying, well, everything fits nicely into zero to one anyway. So I'm just going to pack it into this first UDIM. So what we want to do is just globally increase the, the scale of these individual UV islands. And if we scroll back up to the uh, scale option here, rather than setting it to largest packable, we can bring that over to fixed. And there you can see we're taking advantage of those UDIM tiles. All right. So at the moment we're using 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004. Okay. And just to make, take advantage of the, the additional space we've got in these, we can just bump up that value to something like 1.99. All right, so why 1.99 and not two? Okay, so if we went to two, you can see how all of our UV coordinates have dropped below, all right? Now, this indicates to me that none of these tiles fit into any of these UDIM cells, so it's gone into the negative values. Okay, so that's something to be wary of because these uh, these UDIM tiles don't have they're they're not valid values because they're into the negative values here. Okay, so if you see that happening, you might need to just tweak this scale value. So I'm going to put mine to 1.9, and as you can see, we've still got a little bit of of room there. So 1.99 seems to work. Okay. Another thing to be wary of when working with UDIMs, any coordinates that stray across into their 
corresponding uh, UV UDIM cell will cause a substance painter to throw an error. Uh, so just be wary that you know everything should be very neatly aligned to its individual U, uh, UV tile. And as you can see here, the UV layout node has done a great job of of packing those packing those together. Okay, so that's how you'd set up uh, UDIM coordinates on your terrain. Simple as that, two nodes. In the next video, we will bake out all our geometry to disk, and then we'll bring it into Substance Painter. So I uh, will see you there, thanks.